We'll continue our lecture about the organization of genes differs in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So the prokaryotic DNA genes are closely packed with a few non-coding gaps. There is a structure called operon. Operons in the prokaryotes operate as a single unit from a, from a single promoter. So the operon is transcribed into a continuous strand of messenger RNA that carries the message for a related uh, series, series of proteins. Each section of messenger RNA represented the unit or gene that encodes one of the protein in the series. While in eukaryotic DNA, encoding genes that function together are often separated in DNA. Each gene is transcribed from each promoter, producing one messenger RNA. The nucleotide sequence of the eukaryotic messenger RNA revealed that the eukaryotic gene exists in pieces of coding sequence, exons separating by non-protein coding sequence segments, which is intron. The conclusion, the initial, the long initial primary transcript messenger RNA in eukaryotes had to be clipped apart to remove the introns and then stitched back together to produce functional messenger RNAs. Introns are common in multicellular eukaryotes, but extremely rare in bacteria and archaea, and uncommon in many unicellular eukaryotes such as yeast. So here we'll talk about an example, the senses of the amino acid uh, tryptophan, as an example of the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So the tryptophan operon in, um, is co contain five structural genes which encode uh, the tryptophan synthase. In prokaryotes, the genes are trip A, B, C, D, E, while in eukaryotes, the, the genes called trip 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you can see in the, in the prokaryotes, the genes are located on the DNA and, uh, uh, named by tryptophan operon. This gene is have only one start site for the transcription of the tryptophan synthase messenger RNA. While so you can see that while in the eukaryotes, each each gene is uh, separated from the other gene by long non-coding regions. So you can see the trip 1 and 4 gene on the chromosome uh, 4, while trip 2 genes on chromosome 5, while trip 5, uh, uh, trip 5 gene on chromosome uh, 7, while trip 3 gene on chromosome uh, uh, 11. So you can see that each gene have its own uh, start site, so it will have its own promoter which uh, contradicting what's happening, what's occurring in prokaryotes, that all the five genes have only one star site, and so they will have only one promoter to initiate the transcription. Both of them undergo transcription, but the major difference is that in prokaryotes you have a very long uh, uh, messenger RNA that have a lot of uh, uh, start sites uh, for protein synthesis, while in uh, eukaryotes you have uh, five uh, trip messenger RNA are produced uh, based on the locations of the genes. Soon after that, uh, translation occurred to have uh, five different proteins that, that all uh, will form a complex of tryptophan uh, synthase. And this process is similar in both. You have the five different proteins. So, in eukaryotes, you have a three eukaryotic RNA polymerase that catalyze the formation of different messenger, uh, different RNAs. You have uh, uh, RNA polymerase one, uh, two, and three. Each eukaryotic RNA polymerase transcribes genes encoding different RNAs. So you can see that RNA polymerase one, which is located in the nucleolus. It, it, it involves the right, it, it shares in the formation of the ribosome component and protein synthesis. While the RNA polymerase 2 in the nucleus uh, it is trans, uh, transcribe, uh, uses to transcribe uh, the messenger RNA, the sn uh, small uh, short nuclear RNAs, and short interference RNAs, and uh, micro RNAs. And the, the function of each is, uh, is shown in the table. And you have as well RNA polymerase uh, 3, which is located in the nucleus, and it is involved in the transcription of transfer RNA, 5S ribosomal RNA, uh, small nuclear RNA, U6, and the 7S RNA, and other small staples RNA. And you can see as well the function of each RNA type.
We'll continue talking about uh, transcription and transcription in uh, eukaryotes is a bit complicated than uh, prokaryotes. A general transcription factor need to position the polymerase too at the start site and assist initiation. Initially, uh, the uh, a transcription factor 2D, TF2D, which is consist which consists of a tata box binding protein TPP and the 13 TPP associated protein factors TAFs. These complex TF2D locate the tata box TATA box on uh, on the promoter of the DNA. This uh, TPP protein is the first protein to bind to the tata box promoter, and while the TPP interacts with minor groove in DNA and bending the DNA. The TAFs function in initiation, initiating the transcription from promoter that lack a tata box. Once TF2D has bound, TF2A and TF2B can bind, as seen from the figure. TF2B bind to the major groove of DNA and assist polymerase 2 in melting DNA strands at the transcription start site. The TF2F uh, binds to polymerase 2 and help in positioning the polymerase over the start sites to form a structure called core uh, PIC. The complex of polymerase 2 uh, plus the general transcription factor bound to it uh, to the promoter are ready to initiate a uh, transcription and as I told just said that this complex is called a pre-initiation complex PIC or core PIC. So that's the initial sequence of uh, binding of some of the transcription factor to the RNA polymerase. To continue, the transcription factor 2E uh, creates a docking site for transcription 2H to bind. This is followed by the binding of transcription factor 2H to complete the assembly of uh, BIC. So now it's called closed BIC, closed pre-initiation complex. This PIC assemble at the promoters of every protein coding gene expressed by eukaryotic cells. Now the helicase activity of TF2H unwind the DNA at the start site, allowing polymerase 2 to form an open PIC. The DNA duplex surrounding the start site is melted, forming a transcription bubble, and the template strand is bound at the polymerase activation active site. So to continue, we have now an open PIC complex as polymerase transcribe away from the promoter region. TF2B uh, is released. Uh, as well, there is the transcription factor 2H uh, have a kinase activity that phosphorylates the carboxyl, carboxy terminal domain CTD of polymerase 2. Now the complex after uh, uh, phosphorylation have become is called initially transcription uh, transcribing complex that soon will move along the uh, elongation uh, along the DNA but needs first to release the initiation factor and the elongation uh, factors. Uh, needs uh, sorry to to relieve uh, to release the initiation factor and uh, bound to new elongation factor aiding the process of elongation of the messenger RNA through transcription and now the complex is called elongation complex. Polymerase uh, to uh, initiate a transcription in the resulting open complex, so it moves this ball to moves away uh, from the promoter and its CTD. Uh, become phosphorylated by the TF2H kinase and the general transcription factor which actually the initia initiation factors are released. DNA eukaryotic precursor a messenger RNA need to be processed to form a functional messenger RNA. In bacterial cells the translation of a messenger RNA into protein can begin at the 5 end, uh, five dash end or 5 prime end of messenger RNA even while the 3 prime end still being synthesized by the RNA polymerase. So actually the transcription and translation occur concurrently in bacteria. While in eukaryotes, the primary transcript or precursor DNA or messenger RNA or the pre-messenger RNA or the nascent messenger RNA or heterogeneous messenger RNA need to be processed in a process called RNA processing to form a functional RNA.
So you can see here um, a simplified structure for RNA, messenger RNA, with the five end and the three end. So the RNA processing actually it has three modifications. The first one is the addition of 7-methyl guanylate 5' prime cap methyl is M7G uh, triple P at the 5 end. Once it's a 5, so it needs to add this structure, which is a 7 methyl guanylate, to the 5 uh, end of the messenger RNA in a process called capping. Once the 5 uh, prime end of the nascent messenger RNA emerges for the RNA polymerase, this uh, nucleotide, the modified nucleotide 7 methyl guanylate, is connected by a very uh, unusual linkage called 5 5 triphosphate linkage. You can see as well that the first two uh, nucleotides uh, uh, change the OH is converted to methyl group uh, to make it a non-functional group. So the function of the cap actually protect the messenger RNA from enzymatic degradation, help the messenger RNA export to the cytoplasm. The cap is well bound by a protein factor factor required uh, to begin translation in the cytoplasm. So this is the first modification that occur on the five prime end. There is another modification that occurs at, at the 3' prime end, so it is the addition of a polyadenine tail at the 3' end. The first cleavage by endonuclease to yield a free OH group, this xenoboy uh, A polymerase adds a string of adenylic acid residue that may, that may, may reach up to, uh, to up till uh, 250 bases. So you can see here that it's replaced by OH, uh, actually, the function of the polyadenyl ATL is important in stabilizing and translation of messenger RNA. The third modification is the RNA splicing. Actually, it is inter internal cleavage of the transcript to excise uh, introns and to stitch to get together the coding exon, as you can see from the uh, GIF image. The functional eukaryotic and the prokaryotic messenger RNA have non-coding regions at each end which determined the 5' and 3' untranslated regions, UTR. These UTR participate in the regulation of messenger RNA translation and stability. So to summarize the modification that occurred to uh, modification or processing that occurred to the pre-messenger RNA to form a functional messenger RNA, if you consider the beta global genomic DNA and you can see that the exons in red and the entrance in blue and the UTR on the both sides five and five dash and uh, three dash. First, there is a primary RNA transcript that have all the components. You can see that the cap has already been added to the five prime end. Soon, it's followed by the addition of the polyadenine tail at the 3' end. After that, the process of uh, removal of the entron and the stitching back the entrons, which is a glue entrons, and the stitching back the exons, and now the beta globulin messenger RNA is functional. So, initial messenger RNA produced as a primary transcript, it's immature and not fully functional. So this modification, the three modifications, splicing, polyadenylation, and addition of 5-cap is important for making the messenger RNA uh, functional. So you can see here from this uh, figure, it's a repre representative uh, uh, fragment of a DNA that have three exons and two entrons under the control of a, a, a one a promoter. So you can see here the primary transcript got the three exons and two entrons. And there is a, a, a splicing uh, for the uh, entrons and exons until formation of uh, the functional uh, messenger RNA. So actually this is another slide illustrating the messenger RNA processing. So what is alternative splicing? Actually, it is another level of amplification of the signal that is uh, transcribed and translated from the DNA. Uh, so alternative splicing can produce different messenger RNA and the protein product from the same gene. Notice that the larger uh, messenger RNA on the left contain three exons spliced together, but that the shorter messenger RNA on the right contain only two exons. So that's alternative splicing from the same gene. So you have a larger one messenger RNA. In this, in this one, in the second one on the uh, right, uh, you can see that 
eggs and eggs and three have been um, uh, accounted as as an entrance, so it was spliced out. Okay, so you have now two different messenger RNA. Eventually, to compare between the simple comparison between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, the transcription for prokaryotes in cytoplasm while eukaryotes in nucleus. Transcription and translation occur together in a prokaryote, but the, the, in, in eukaryotes, the RNA transcript had to be modified in the nucleus before being exported to the cytoplasm. Of course, the prokaryotes have no processing is need, while eukaryotes, uh, the RNA must be processed. Another representative example about uh, the alternative splicing, so there is a representative fragment of um, DNA that have five exons, and you can see the primary transcript with the five exons. So th the first alternative splicing that took all the exons resulted in the protein A, while the second alternative splicing excludes exon 3, resulted in a protein B with a, diff with a different uh, structure. While the third processing uh, uh, excluded the exon 4, and you can see a different protein have been produced. So that's the amplification of the signal of the gene. You now have a three different proteins uh, have been translated from a three different messenger RNA, and all of them came from one gene. So alternative RNA splicing increase the number of protein expressed from a single eukaryotic gene. In contrast to bacterial and archaeal uh, genes, the vast majority of genes in multicellular eukaryotic eukaryotes contain multiple entrons. The presence of multiple entrons in eukaryotic genes permit the expression of a multiple related protein from a single gene by means of alternative splicing. In higher eukaryotes, this alternative splicing is an important mechanism for production of different form of protein. Actually, they are not 100% different, so they, co they call it isoform by different types of cells. Let, let's take, uh, for example, fibronectin. Fibronectin is an extracellular adhesive protein found in mammals and secreted by fibroblasts and hepatocytes, and they are a good example to illustrate alternative splicing. In fibroblasts, Fibronectin messenger RNA contains two exons called E3A and E3B. These two exons encode a protein domain that enables the fibroplast to adhere to the extracellular matrix. While in hepatocytes, the fibronectin messenger RNA lack these two exons. So the fibronectin secreted by the hepatocytes into blood doesn't adhere to other cell type which allow it to circulate. So so this figure illustrates how the alternative splicing happened in fibronectin. So actually fibronectin is more, can produce fibronectin gene, can produce more than 20 different isoform of fibronectin have been identified, each encoded by a different alternatively spliced messenger RNA composed of the unique combination of fibronectin uh, um, gene exons. So this is, if, we, if this uh, uh, figure represented the uh, hypothetical uh, DNA fragment or gene of fibronectin, you can see that all, uh, all of these are entrons and all the blocks with different colors are different exons. So in case in fibroblast, all the exons have been taken and E3A, E3B encode amino acid sequence that help fibroblast to adhere to extracellular matrix. While in case in, in, of hepatocyte, you can see that in, um, there is no exon 3 and exon 4 because they have been spliced out during the processing, uh, uh, during the RNA processing um, uh, before being translated.